Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. Hey everybody, this is the next installment of uh, trading large caps. Uh, again, there's there's millions of ways to trade large caps, but what I want to talk about is the way that I trade them and the way I transitioned into trading them. So what I do is I scalp mid to large cap companies, okay? So let's be clear, I scalp gappers. That's it. I have other stocks that I watch daily to trade with the trend, but majority of the time what I what I wake up every day and do is run a scan to look for the gappers in these mid to large cap companies and I trade those gaps. I trade the volatility. So here is my criteria. I did the scanner video. I hope you all have seen that. Again, just to reiterate this, the criteria is this. A gap plus or minus 3%, okay? This means that I, I don't really care about trading with the gap. I just wanna see it gap. So the gap creates volatility. And so that's why I look for this. So plus or minus 3%. 3% or more for a gap up, 3% or less, minus 3% or less for a gap down. So next criteria is 100,000 plus pre-market volume. I use this to start to analyze, but by the market open, that volume should be more than 300,000. So if it's not, it's up to you to decide whether you trade it or not. If it's a known company and a popular ticker, eh, I might trade it. Just depends. The price has to be greater than $10 for me. And the average daily volume has to be greater than a million. Now I don't put that in my scan because I want to see everything. If you put that in your scan in something that is gapping down a bunch or gapping up a bunch, but doesn't normally trade that much volume, you won't see it. So you leave that out of there. This is just something I do when I look at the daily chart after it hits the scanner. I look at the chart and then I look at the daily candles and I see if, you know, on average it trades more than a million, right at a million or more than a million. Um, and my exception is that uh, if it's already traded more than a million shares pre-market um, and the average daily volume is not greater than a million, I'm probably still going to consider a big interest in it because most other people are uh, considering the amount of volume. It needs a catalyst. I will not trade mergers, I will not trade acquisitions, and I will not trade ETFs. I don't trade DGAS, UGAS, TVIX, VIX, uh, none of them. I won't trade SPY, I won't trade QQQ, I, I don't care about any of those, okay? Don't care about it, I don't care about it. Market cap, I want it to be greater than 300 million. Again, I just don't wanna see the typical small cap company in there. I wanna make sure that I'm not seeing a price greater than 10, but it's actually a 2 million market cap. So I wanna make sure that I'm looking at a mid to large cap company, even though a mid cap company uh, you don't see a mid cap company until a market cap over 2 billion, I believe is what the criteria is. I can't remember. I know a small cap company is technically anything under 2 billion, but I mean, it's very different for what we think. So I just don't want to see anything, uh, around 300 million or less. Next, I trade with the trend. I don't care the direction of the gap. I care about the direction of the chart. I look at the five-year weekly chart to start off with, 
And the trend indicators that I put on my chart are the 50 period simple moving average and the 200 period simple moving average. All that is, is a 50 period SMA and a 200 period SMA. That's really it. One year daily is my, is my daily chart and that's the same as the weekly. Now, when it comes to finding the levels, that's different. Okay, this is just, de this is determining the trend. What's the trend on the weekly? Is it above the 50 period SMA and above the 200? Definitely in an uptrend. If it's below the 50, but above the 200, it could be a trend change if the daily confirms it. If the daily says that it's below the 50 and below the 200, it's a trend change. And now I'm gonna be looking at it as a short. So those are just some of the things that I judge using those little indicators. They're not based on my entries or anything. They just give me my bias on the trade, whether I'm looking at it for the long side or the short side. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T-O-S-H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.